Well, hey guys, welcome to this Nomadic Ideas show where we discuss the uncensored truth about full-time life on the road. Whether it's RVing, schoolie, van, it doesn't make any difference. If you are thinking about a full-time nomadic lifestyle, this show is for you. We are Scott and Ariane from This Nomadic Idea. We stream this show every Sunday night at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on our YouTube channel, This Nomadic Idea. And you can catch the audio version the next day, which is always different, on thisnomadicidea.com. You can catch it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, our iHeartRadio. We always share the audio version on Monday morning the next day. We have a pretty good show today. Uh, we are going to talk about nomad travel and nomad travel budget and strategies. Huge topic. Everyone wants to know how much you're going to spend as a nomad. We're going to share our personal stories, how to make money, and can you make money while spending money, and how does that work? We also share our strategy for expense how we use credit cards to actually earn money later on for, our, for ourselves. We answer the question, how important is it to have an emergency fund? We're gonna share our personal stories with that for and for future income growth. This is all about money, 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 money. Let's go. This is not a drill. Repeat, this is not a drill. Shall we begin? Shall we begin? By the way, we just launched our Facebook group, This Nomadic Idea. Please come and hang out with us on facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash This Nomadic Idea. It's a private group where we discuss topics such as this one on our group page and we get a lot of insight and everyone shares different ideas for budgeting on the road. So this is huge. And I would say that for most full-time RVers, nomads, the very first thing is to create an emergency fund and to understand just how important that emergency fund is going to be. So if you are thinking about this lifestyle on the road, if you are planning to live full-time in an RV, I would say even if you're planning like half-time, for you know half time on the road having a budget or having an emergency fund is so so important so let me give you a little um a, a little uh, insight onto our emergency fund and how it worked for us and what we would have done different so when we created our emergency fund we were planning um every bit a year and a half in advance before we hit the road, before our date was to go full time. And I would probably say that it wasn't enough. Um, if we had to do it all over again, instead of doing one year um, versus the income that we made uh, that would equal our emergency fund, I would have done at least a year and a half um, and put that in our emergency fund because things go wrong on the road and having that emergency fund really takes a lot of pressure off of what is um you know when things do go wrong you're not in such a panic mode to replace that income so a creating emergency fund based on your lifestyle not somebody else's lifestyle your lifestyle what is your lifestyle what was your lifestyle before you went full-time or what is your lifestyle as you're planning to go full-time? If if you have not figured out what your lifestyle, because it's different for everybody. You know, it's, everyone's different. Nobody, no two people have the exact same lifestyle. Likes, dislikes, you know, what kind of uh, vehicle are you going to live in? Whether it's an RV, schoolie, van, it, you know, what's your lifestyle? Where are you going to be camping? Where do you plan to camp? What is your lifestyle going to be on the road? That's huge to understand as you're creating this emergency fund uh, so you can plan you can plan ahead. 
So, how much will you need to plan ahead of time? It should be at least 1.5 years, um, at least one and a half times what you made that previous year in total income, okay? Not net pay, but gross. What did you make that total year? And it, it, it should be at least 1.5 or times and a half more of that income. So that's, that's number one. That's the very first thing that, that we would suggest you do. And, 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 and so why? Why, why is that important? Well, so let, let's just share some basic emergency fund topics that we ran into. One, van repairs. And van repairs for us happened very early on. So, I mean, our, our first month um, full-time RVing uh, was we had to get a new alternator. We had to get two brand new batteries since our van is a little bit unique. It's, it's got two batteries. It's a diesel. And so in, in the first month, that was well into $700, $800 worth of repairs. Since then, we've had to get a brand new radiator that completely blew, which also, by the way, it's not just the repairs you're gonna need in emergency or your tow vehicle breaks down or you just need, you know, brakes done or you need, you know, um, you know, vehicle repair, right? It's the, it's the time that it takes to repair that of which broke. For us, that put us in, um, in two situations in an RV park longer than what we wanted to do. So you gotta figure, not only did we have to pay for a new alternator and a new battery, but then we had to pay an extra $25 a night in one, extra $45 a night in another. So that was budget money that, you know, you we didn't plan for, right? So it's not always just the repair, it's the repair that puts you off the road and where are you gonna stay? And if it's your RV, that breaks down where you stay you know if your rv has to go into a shop or if your rv has to go back to a dealer or to an rv repair depending on kind of warranties and what's happened and they say well yeah you can park your rv here but we're not going to get to you for a week where are you gonna, where are you gonna stay where are you gonna go so that's hugely hugely important um rv repairs usually tires maintenance you know, we, we have heard so many stories about slide outs that have stopped working, leaks, uh, you know, frame issues. So that's always something that you have to know. It's not if it's gonna happen, it's when it's gonna happen. And those things really do happen. I mean, so the van, new alternator, new radiator, uh, new tires, we had to get four new tires for the van um, or our oil changes because we have 15 quarts of oil in the van our average bill is 125 dollars for an oil change so you know we have a diesel so we're going to be putting we're, we right away we're going to be spending more money on gas um just because we have a diesel so these are all you know things that you want to kind of put you know plan and prepare for as you're getting ready to live a full-time nomad life you have um medical expenses that you did not plan for you know um whether it's you know something that happens to you that you're gonna have to go in and to a quick emergency room and get that taken care of you know or you have if you you know we just did a video on pets last uh um or we did a show on pets last week so on episode 20 so what happens if your pet has an emergency, right? So in our case, you know, Caldonia was stung by something. So that's a vet bill. And I can tell you vet bills are almost, if not more expensive than you going into the emergency room because pet care is hugely expensive. What if you have to go out of town or you have to go, you know, you have to go someplace. It's dog daycare that's expensive so these are all budget items or all emergency fund items that you may incur while you are on the road so 
Tip number one, as you are thinking about how much you want to save to live a full-time life, make categories in your emergency fund and say, okay, well, I've got this, this, this. I have to, you know, you know, health, pet, RV safety or RV repairs, tow vehicle safety, uh, tow vehicle repairs. Um, you know, everything breaks. Everything breaks when you're towing a RV. It's going to break. Things are going to go wrong. In our case, rivets are going to pop. You know, you're, you know, that, that's all based on not taking money out of your monthly income if you're making a monthly income and trying to plan for that so it's just not a uh, it's not so much sticker shock when that happens because it it definitely it definitely will happen so like in our case you know when we first our first week on the road we had to get a new air conditioner so you know that was 1200 bucks so you know now i was very lucky because i was able to to rip the old ac out and help with the install of the new one that's pretty rare i had actually asked for that and so i put in uh, probably about 10 hours worth of labor and that was 110 dollars an hour of labor that i saved by doing the work myself so have an emergency fund so you understand exactly how that's going to work what emergencies because you know no one it's an emergency no one no one plans for an emergency but they happen but if you if you if you create a savings account for yourself or an emergency fund and there's a lot of different ways to create an emergency fund it doesn't always have to be cash on hand it can be credit cards that you don't use that have maybe a two three five thousand dollar limit okay i'm gonna talk a little bit about credit cards in a minute about how we use that for an emergency fund also, it doesn't always have to be cash on hand in a checking or savings account. So we set a monthly expense worksheet. And we did that in the beginning of what our monthly static expenses were going to be. And those are kind of easy to figure out, figure out. So you've got gas, you have food, you have lodging, but you have like bills, so you have health insurance, car insurance. If you have to, if you have to pay back a loan, you know you you know what those are. You know like Netflix or or if you have any kind of streaming services or just monthly bills that you pay all the time. They're never going to change. They're never your grocery bill is never going to change. Your gas is going to be about the same. <coughs> your gas is going to be about the same. Um, you know, these things are going to be static each and every month. So what we did was we got a Chase Sapphire credit card because those bills are going to stay the same all the time. So what we did was through our emergency fund or through our savings, what we did was we put gas, food, and our monthly bills, like your cell phone bill, your internet bill, things like that, we put that on our Chase Sapphire credit card. Now, why would we put that on a credit card when you know you're 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 you're, you're going to have to pay interest on that? Well, the key here is that we don't pay interest on that. We float that for our, from billing period to billing period, and the Chase Sapphire credit card earns us points. It earns us travel points. And you can link that card to Amazon. So you can use those points to buy things off of Amazon. And Amazon gives you points for that. So what we've done is we, we, we kind of give ourselves a 30-day grace period. To get, you know, 30 days to replace that income or bring that income in to pay off the next month's expenses. So if you're spending like $1,200 a month on food and um, and gas on average, right? Um, maybe even more, maybe more than that. Then what we do is we put that on the credit card. The next month, we pay that off in cash. So we don't ever have a balance on our credit card. Now, that gives us an extra 
few thousand dollars in an emergency fund if we need to use it and it gives us 30 days to figure out how we're going to pay that back so that's one of the ways that we have decided to earn money while spending money or make money while spending monthly static costs and bills that we don't have any you know we don't have that, that they're going to be static all the time food groceries gas and monthly bills um we we didn't we don't really figure that too much in lodging uh, so to speak but if you are going to stay at rv parks all the time if that's your plan if that's how your lifestyle is and that's how you travel then you know that's going to be a static monthly cost right you know what your monthly is going to be you know how much that rv park is going to cost you per month to stay there and then that could be included in your budget and that can be put on that particular credit card there are other credit cards we like the chat the chase sapphire uh credit card i would urge you guys to look that up and look at the points and see how that works um i think we've got about three thousand dollars in travel points that we could use for an emergency if we needed to travel someplace or you know we needed to hop on a plane and go someplace we may want a vacation at some point in time just to get away from it well that's money in the bank that we don't have to spend money on on airfare and we also have you know quite a few uh quite a quite a bit of money uh, saved in amazon points so that's something that you are planting seeds financial seeds for your future so you can use on the road when you need it the most um unexpected budget items that will kill your budget and this is a big one i think almost every rver or every podcast or show or video or blog post i have ever read has all said the same thing so uh take this as a great piece of advice your your budget busters are going to be food and entertainment those are your big budget busters because when you first get on the road you're excited you know you're you want to experience and soak all this, this travel stuff in and soak it all in um and so you know you do that because that's kind of really why you decided to be on the road you wanted to explore you wanted to experience new things well take it from me i can tell you that experiencing new things cost money <laughs> so they're not free so you you know like going out and you know renting uh a razor to go out and hit uh, off-road trails in moab that's going to cost money it's going to cost a lot of money food entertainment going to see concerts going to this great restaurant that's trending i mean in, in moab or in sedona or you know uh, up by yellowstone all that stuff costs money you know and you know that is a huge budget buster so when you think about travel and you think about full timing on the road and you're putting up your emergency fund i would actually set up a category called unexpected entertainment costs because you are going to definitely use that money no doubt about it and so it's just the way that that's just the reality of your your travel it's just the reality of it so um it it definitely is a budget buster for us um we've gotten a lot better at that um but it did take us the first year to say hey look we need to settle down a little bit and so we started bulk grocery shopping um you know to try to save a little bit of money now we have a small refrigerator in this airstream so when we bulk gross bulk grocery shop you know we buy a lot of canned goods a lot of maybe soups things like that we that we don't necessarily have to put in our refrigerator um but again you know your lifestyle understand your lifestyle it's not so much to know it but you have to understand how your lifestyle is going to affect you on the road full time and uh your lifestyle that you're living in your sticks and bricks doesn't necessarily have to change when you are on the road and understand that if you're spending you know three thousand dollars a month four thousand dollars a month to live that lifestyle in a sticks and bricks that doesn't necessarily change when you're on the road it doesn't mean you're going to get it's going to be cheaper for you 
Um, I would argue the fact that it, it's probably going to stay closer to the same. So we also use PayPal um, as a cash on hand account. We like PayPal because you can transfer money back and forth to uh, other people. You don't get hit with a fee, Venmo. The reason we use PayPal is because PayPal has a cash back um, a credit card. So not only do we have a credit card or debit card, it's really a debit card that is linked to our PayPal account, but then PayPal will give you cash back to use that card. So sometimes we've gotten like seven bucks a month back um, and seven dollars a month you're almost starting to get into like what a bank fee would cost monthly like ten or twelve dollars in a regular checking account um, and so instead of spending that ten twelve dollars a month in a bank fee we're getting that back through PayPal the other thing PayPal offers and the reason why we like PayPal is that they have a bill me later credit card now they've got to qualify for the credit card but they've got a bill me later where you can get up to a thousand three thousand credit line and you have six months to pay that back before you incur interest so do you see where i'm going at it's like you don't want to incur the interest at all you want to beat that game by paying that off back before you in, incur the interest. PayPal six months, Chase Sapphire is 30 days. So if you use that and pay cash, because those are fixed monthly expenses, if you have an emergency, why would you, you know, take that out of your emergency fund if you can pay that back off in six months? So that's kind of been our strategy as full-timers on the road, is to use that money smartly and wisely so we can plant, you know, we can plant seeds for future income and plant seeds so we can maintain this lifestyle for as long as we can in case we're not bringing in the income that we want to. And in episode 22 next week, or episode 23, I'm sorry, we're going to have someone who started a YouTube channel and we're going to, we're going to, we're going to ask them how long it's taken for that channel to grow since a lot of people think social media, YouTube, passive income, affiliate marketing, they think they're going to just go and hit the road and make all this money at it. But we're going to dive into just how long that's taken them. Um, and uh, they explore in a little guy, Max. So it's going to be a fascinating interview with them. I can't wait for you guys to see that. That's going to be next week on Sunday show. So anyway, you guys, thank you so much for uh, listening. Really appreciate everybody, uh, everybody's comments. And thank you so much for supporting the channel. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate it. Um, thank you guys so much. This show can be, uh, you can always watch it on uh, this Nomadic Idea YouTube channel, and you can always catch the show on any of your favorite podcatchers. Uh, and we will see you, we'll see you next week. Thanks, you guys. Bye.